Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moon Shadow Mystery Channel. As always, I am your rainbow eyed host, Compound Eyes, better known as Moon Shadow Mystery the Changeling. And today we're going to be doing a brief talk on the newest episode of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. Season 7, episode 19, it isn't the main thing about you. Natural, it goes without saying, there will be some spoilers. But let's get on into it. That episode starts off with it being about Mare Day. I'm assuming this is the My Little Pony equivalent of Mother's Day, but this is more or less just a plot convenience. Or rather, not even really a plot point, it's just more of a passing mention. We see a whole line of Ponyville citizens around the Flower Trio's flower stand. Thankfully, they're not over-utilizing the hyper-reactions and passing out. But we do see Rarity helping out in alleviating the stress. Now, well, by simply making it easier. By suggesting color-coordinating the flowers for the intended recipient with the color of their mane. Now that may seem a little silly to us, but it does kind of make sense. It's a nice way of saying, hey, I thought about you and I just picked something that would go well with your colors. But again, this is barely just a passing glance. They do come back to it later in the episode, but it barely deserves a mention at all, aside from just being the opening bit of the episode. We see Rarity moving slowly throughout Ponyville, gathering various things that she needs for the real plot of the episode, a shoot by photo finish. I realize that my photo finish impersonation is subpar. But, is there anything you want? You know I can do it. Yes, I is a dream of dream. I can make you to it. Take a chance. Mm, what I do is the best. We can take you, clean you up, and make you shine a buzz arrest. I had to take the opportunity, but I hold no kettle on Isle Monty. But anyways, she visits various places after placing an order for lilacs from the flower trio, she heads to the fan store in order to get some fans to give her a windblown look for the shoot. Then on to the furniture store where she looks for a new, well, not a painting couch so much. I'm not really sure what you call it. I am not a furniture person. But just something basically for her to lay on and accentuate her mane and her features. After her last stop, a trick could come to meet with Pinky to get some sugary delights to put Photo Finish in a pleasant mood. All goes to Tartarus in a handbasket. Pinky, being Pinky, decides to celebrate the one year anniversary of the twins' first sneeze. Which I find strange as I thought the twins were already over a year old by this point. The passage of time in Equestria is so confusing. You know, say, she sprays what I was initially believed to be silly stream, but as it turns out, is basically like a liquid epoxy. It's a super duper celebration stream, which apparently is so sticky, anything that makes contact with it is instantly stuck. And unlike glue, it doesn't harden, chip away, etc. It remains sticky. So what do they do? They do something that was very unexpected. For the first time in two seasons, since season four, we have a genuine mention of Zakora, where she plays a pivotal point. Not really pivotal, but she does show for at least a good five, ten minutes through the episode. Uh, five minutes is probably more accurate. Still, she talks, she interacts, she gives advice, she brews up a brew. Zakora is back. Frank Luna! We haven't... It's really a shame that we haven't seen more of her lately, but I'm glad we're seeing more. But on the way to Zakora's house, we see lots of glowing yellow eyes in the forest. 
Now, first thoughts, because of the shapes, I thought maybe they were zebras. They were non-hostile. They lurked in the shadows. However, at a certain point where Rarity snapped at them for staring, I heard what seemed like a very faint canine-like whimper, leading me to believe it's one of two options. Either diamond dogs, for who for whatever reason are now lurking in the Everfree, or the most likely one, young adolescent timber wolves. Which makes sense since timber wolves' eyes do glow yellow. However, it's never revisited again, so it's not really important. The next thing we see is Zakora brewing up her special brew for Pinkie Pie and Rain Rarity. Now, maybe asking why is she brings something for Pinkie? Well, she stuck to the cake twins for one thing. The other, she literally got that stuff on everything. So, a remove all potion for Pinkie? Shampoo for Rarity? What could possibly go wrong? Well, after Zagora and Pinkie start talking about various scary stories related to main incidents, Rarity freaks out, knocks both of them on the floor, and picks up the wrong one. You can see where this is going. Because she wasn't aware that there was a real difference between the two, because they literally look identical. They're even in the same kind of vial. The remo Rarity even starts washing her mane with the removal potion when she gets home. The little trick to this removal potion is it removes only what you're thinking about. Yeah. She was obsessed with her mane, so she lost most of it. The rest of the episode is basically Rarity sulking, moving around, trying to collect her things for her shoot, and coming to believe that every pony treats her differently because of her appearance. We see her make various stops to her friends, Applejack, Pink, uh, Fluttershy, Rainbow Dash, Twilight, Starlight. We do see mention of Spike, who I feel is underutilized, but only for all of a few frames. Which is a shame, because if any pony could have made Rarity feel better, I feel it would have been Spike. Naturally, she only goes to Twilight and Starlight when she is looking for a magical solution, which, as Akora had already told her, would not work. However, thanks to Fluttershy, excuse me, Applejack and Rainbow Dash, she gets other ideas. Naturally, Applejack has the most simple approach, which honestly is the one that made the most sense, and that was a wig. Unfortunately, the wig she suggested was attached to a bonnet. Well, nice try, Applejack. Fluttershy and her animal friends try to sculpt her one out of foliage and sticks. Clearly that wasn't going to work, but it's the thought that counts. Rainbow actually had the most promising one, which actually made me hurt for it when it didn't work. Rainbow took a bunch of clouds and formed what arguably is one of the most beautiful, elegant-looking hairstyles I've seen in a couple of seasons. Sadly, because it was a cloud and right as a unicorn, it didn't work. I'm impressed with Rainbow Dash for actually creating a gorgeous style, which just made it feel so bad for Rarity. Rarity being Rarity, she goes into one of her sulking moods. Namely, lights out on the couch, eating buckets upon buckets of ice cream. Thankfully, her friends were unwilling to give up on her, even after she called and canceled her appointments. I will point out that while she was trying to collect her belongings in her uh, cloak, trying to keep any pony from seeing her mane, she was acting very Fluttershy-esque. And I'm talking about like season 1-2 Fluttershy. Like ponies walking in front of her, getting her orders. Like seriously, one business pony sold her reserved furniture simply because some pony else offered to pay more. That's not an indicator on Rarity. That guy has shoddy business practices. Which is the problem I have with businesses in general, but we're not going to go into that. However, her acting differently is the, was the whole problem. 
she put way too much emphasis in her mane, her looks. Something she's always done. So in all honesty, this episode has been coming for a while. Moving on. It doesn't help that whenever her mane was exposed, people freaked out. Literally, a little filly cried seeing it. Okay, I don't care how confident you are, that would shake you. That would shake me, and I am openly an unattractive changeling. But, that is off topic. As the friends, minus Pinkie Pie, who is still attempting to clean up the bakery with the shampoo. I'm not sure how she didn't realize it was shampoo, but pinky, pink, pinky, I suppose. Show up at the Carousel Boutique in order to talk some sense into Rarity. A few wonderfully touching words from each of them later, and Rarity realizes it's not every pony else treating her more strangely, she is the one acting strange. With the realization that beauty does not come from without, but from within. Behind curtain later, and we see the re-emergence of the very shortly seen punk rock rarity. Seriously, she goes full on 80s era punker. But the style she goes with her tattered mane and tail is gorgeous as much as it is cool. And getting her swagger back, she fixes all the other problems again. I'm actually finding it hard to believe that a lot of these business owners are finding it difficult to keep their businesses in demand. With the exception of the fire ones, they're the only ones really in demand. But, as it turns out, spoiled rich, aka spoiled milk, not liking the flowers that Rich picked out for her, he's back at the flower stand trying to find the right ones. Personally speaking, I don't think she'd be happy with anything. We will never know. But Rarity being Rarity, since she canceled her shoot, she gave Filthy Rich her lavender lilac order in order to appease her. Went around and helped every pony else. And then, flash forward a few months later, yes, months. I have no idea what stories possibly took place in... Wait a minute. Rewind. But after helping everybody, they realize what happened. Well, after Rarity takes the time to explain. And then rushes to Sugar Q Corners. Where after opening the door, a flood of shampoo bubbles pours out the door. And not a thing got cleaned. With the exception of Pinkie Pie's mane, Pumpkin Pie's mane, and Pound Cake's mane. Or pumpkin cake. The names confuse me. But either way, their mains are all soft, full, and fabulous. But it's still a big mess. Now we flash forward a few months later. Rarity's mane has grown back to its lovely, long, luscious luxuriousness. I will not be attempting to say that three times fast. So forget about it. And it turns out the magazine shoot has finally reached new stands. Pinky, being the sweet Pinky she is, hopped over to the newsstand, I guess just out of curiousness, picked up a copy and brought it to Rarity. As it turns out, her friends love her far more than she realized, as they made a call to photo finish, explained the situation, and she incognito took photos of Rarity's new, bold, gorgeous look. She not only took the front page, she took up probably half the magazine. I have to admit, with friends like them, I am very jealous. And that is essentially episode 19. It's not the main thing about you. What did I think? I liked this episode. I'm not going to say I loved it, but I liked it. I loved having Zakora reintroduced and making... A second appearance toward the middle, near the end. I didn't like that Spike was underutilized. He didn't even have a speaking role. Which is a shame, because I really feel that he should have been part of the solution. Especially considering that Rarity always seems to hold his 
feelings toward her in high esteem, despite knowing that he's mm, it's just a little kid's crush. But also because of Spike being Spike. Now, I suppose on the plus side, he at least didn't make any negative commentary or do anything to make her feel worse. So that's a plus. But considering they've been doing so well with Spike this season so far, I feel it was a missed opportunity. The rest of it was pretty formulaic, pretty straightforward. So, eh, we've kind of seen this kind of thing before, but it's nice to see Rarity on the end. Having a legitimate reason to feel her confidence shaken. And this kind of feels more like a season one, season two episode, you know, Letter to the Princess, or maybe even a season four diary, a friendship thing, but, you know, I liked it. Could have been better a little bit, but I don't see by a whole lot. For a Slice of Life episode, this is definitely a good one. Not one I would introduce uh, a new brony or peg sister to, but definitely one worth the watch. Definitely worth revisiting in the future. But what do you think? Now, to be perfectly honest, I'm not even sure who wrote this episode. Give me just a quick sec here so I can look that up. I don't care about a review. I don't, I don't want somebody else's opinions. I just want to know who wrote it. Let's see here. Give me just a second, every pony. I wasn't really paying attention when the opening credits hit, so I'm admittedly unsure who wrote it. I shouldn't be able to find it pretty easy, though. I'm just curious because we've been seeing a resurgence of old riders coming back and doing much better than they did in the past. So I just really want to... Oh! Joe Haber... I mean, Josh Haber. Let me see. Who, who, what all did he write before? Let's see... Josh Haber is an animation writer. No, we already know that. Let's see, he did Daring Dunn alongside of Joanna Lewis and Christine Sonko. That's wonderful. Oh. He was actually tasked with writing the first dress of Castlevania, so that's good. I actually like that episode. So yeah, he's not really done a whole lot of work for the show before, but this is a good intro for him. As far as primary writing and credits. I'm actually am curious to see what this guy's going to do in the future for the rest of Season 7. But anyways, that's Episode 19 of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic Season 7. Let me know what you thought of this episode down in the comment section below. Did you like it? Did you dislike it? What did you like best or dislike best and worst about it? Do you think this was a worthwhile addition to this season so far? I want to see what you ponies think down below. As for me, you already know what I think. I think it's a good, not great episode. It's definitely worth rewatching. <laughs> I love that it brought back Zakora and introduced us back to the Everfree Force, seeing it as kind of a dark, mysterious, creepy place as opposed to. Tra la 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 la. You know what I mean? It's been getting less and less dangerous, so seeing it return to a little bit more of the creepy side is definitely a bonus for me. I do feel Spite was underutilized, but at least he didn't make things worse. Which means they're definitely getting better about knowing when and when not to utilize him. But, anyways, everybody, those are my first thoughts about this. I may eventually do a past due review about it in the future. Immediate future, distant future, far future, near future, I have no idea just yet. I have other projects going on. That being said, a quick update for any pony who's been looking forward to a new Let's Play video. I am in the process of recording a second episode of Moonshadow Plays Fallout 3 with My Little Pony and Fallout Equestria mods. I had gotten about midway through it earlier and unfortunately it failed. 
it epically failed. I got the audio recorded, and unfortunately the video portion failed. It froze up, non-responsive. Not sure why, but hopefully I'll get that fixed in the next take. Uh, in addition, I have finally gotten Dragon Ball Xenoverse. Not sure when I'm going to do a video for it, but hopefully you'll see a Dragon Ball version of me. But until then, everybody, let me know your thoughts down below. Let me know what you want to see in the future. As always, if you like this video, give me a nice bro hoof on that like button. If you didn't, give me a nice hard apple butt to the dislike button. If you're not already subscribed and not sure if you want to be just yet, click my name above the video description. Go to the main page where you can see other first thoughts, past due reviews, live action reactions, let's play videos, impersonations, song covers, etc. If you're already subscribed and want to know when new projects are available for viewing, tap that little notification bell icon. As always, to be part of the hive, click that subscribe button and offer your feedback. We still don't have Patreon yet. I I know I've been kind of slacking on that, and I have an idea how to fix it. But I'm a little hesitant to attempt it at this juncture. But anyways, everybody, thank you for tuning in. I hope to see you next time, right back here. Same changeling time, same changeling channel. And as always, everybody, have a great rest of your day, a great rest of your week ahead or weekend, depending on when this video finally gets uploaded, because it's been really finicky about getting things uploaded on time for me. But anyways, everybody, thank you for tuning in, and remember, don't go changeling for anyone but yourselves. I look forward to seeing you right back here next time.